huge armored armadillo the size of a car, a lizard heavier than a polar bear, and a sloth that learned to swim in the ocean. These might sound impossible, but they were real animals, all shaped by the hidden rules of evolution. Today, we're calling it the Desert Rule, and nowhere shows it better than the deserts of North America around 15,000 years ago that produced the Glyptodont, an armored giant the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, weighing over a ton, with a domed shell of bony plates and a spiked tail club. Scientists called it a walking fortress. Its shell was so thick and robust that researchers knew it could withstand attacks from the fiercest Ice Age predators, American lions, dire wolves, even saber-toothed cats. To put the size in perspective, its closest living relative today is the armadillo, which weighs just six kilograms. So this thing was evolution's answer to surviving in a desert where predators gathered at every shrinking waterhole. But there's something even more mysterious about it. It had an incredibly slow metabolism and could subsist on the toughest, driest forage, coarse grasses and even cacti that other herbivores couldn't stomach, suggesting that some evolutionary lineages not only survived the harsh desert conditions, but thrived by becoming nearly indestructible tanks that could outlast any drought. Fast forward a few thousand years, and these same North American deserts were also home to the Shasta ground sloth, a barrel-bodied herbivore weighing 250 kilograms that was perhaps the most desert-adapted sloth that ever lived. With strong, curved claws and a stout build, this thing could dig into dry, pebbly soil and possibly burrow into hillsides for shelter. Fossilized dung reveals it ate what almost nothing else could touch. Joshua tree leaves, creosote bush, salt bush, a catalog of the most toxic, fibrous desert plants. As they moved through the deserts, they ate massive fruits and seeds that no other animal could handle, then spread them across the southwest through their droppings. It's thought that human activity like hunting around 13,000 years ago caused the extinction of these ground sloths, leaving a deep ecological crisis for the desert's plant life. This led to entire species like Joshua trees that had evolved alongside the sloths, suddenly having no way to spread their seeds, and the deserts began to change in ways we're still trying to understand today. This is the desert rule we're talking about. But this same rule created equally bizarre predators. The sparse vegetation and vast expanses created perfect conditions for high-speed pursuit. With nowhere to hide, survival meant outrunning your opponent. During the Pleistocene, this unforgiving terrain drove a cougar-like cat through a remarkable transformation. Morassinonyx, the American cheetah, evolved long, slender limbs and a lightweight build strikingly similar to African cheetahs. This was convergent evolution, similar desert conditions on different continents producing identical solutions. Generation after generation, the fastest cats survived in these exposed plains. Over hundreds of thousands of years, Mirosinonyx became a specialized sprinter. Meanwhile, their primary prey, pronghorn antelope, faced the same pressure from the opposite direction. In these treeless expanses, Pronghorns could only survive by being faster. This arms race explains a modern mystery. Why can pronghorns run 60 miles per hour when no living predator can catch them? They're running from ghosts. When the American cheetah vanished around 12,000 years ago, it left prey still built for a threat that no longer existed. Evolution doesn't reverse course, so pronghorns still sprint across the desert, chased by predators long extinct but some deserts pushed evolution even further. Here, in the ancient Gobi Desert 75 million years ago, there were scorching days, freezing nights, and sandstorms that could bury animals in seconds. This left dinosaurs to fill every survival niche imaginable. Around this time, the Gobi produced Protoceratops, a sheep-sized herbivore with wide, flattened feet adapted for digging through sand to find water-rich roots but Protoceratops pulled off one of evolution's most incredible adaptations for desert life. It laid soft-shelled eggs, unusual for dinosaurs, and buried them in moist sand to prevent dehydration. This reproductive strategy, more like a turtle's than a typical dinosaur's, 
was driven by desert survival, ensuring embryos survived the arid conditions. For millions of years, these dinosaurs dominated the Gobi, but something was hunting them. Velociraptor, a turkey-sized predatory dinosaur covered in feathers, had evolved to become a desert specialist. Those feathers provided insulation during frigid nights and aided thermoregulation by day. It bore a signature curved killing claw on each foot, ideal for clinging to prey even on shifting sand. Unlike most reptiles, Velociraptor's feathers and likely warm-blooded nature made it unusually agile, more like a roadrunner than a lizard. Fossil evidence suggests Velociraptor's timed attacks during blinding sandstorms when herbivores hunkered down an opportunistic behavior that set it apart from typical Cretaceous predators. One famous fossil, the Fighting Dinosaurs, preserves a Velociraptor and Protoceratops locked in combat, buried together by a sudden sandstorm 75 million years ago. But perhaps the strangest Gobi creature was Shavuya deserti, a chicken-sized dinosaur uniquely suited to nocturnal desert life. This tiny theropod had extraordinary night vision and owl-like hearing, it could hunt in complete darkness, with a fragile, bird-like skull and brawny arms ending in a single massive claw, Shavuya dug out termites and burrowing prey beneath the sand. In combining traits of owls, anteaters and roadrunners, Shavuya represents evolution going completely off script. Over in Central Asia, during the Ice Age, things are about to get even weirder. Winters here dropped to minus 30 degrees Celsius, with endless windswept plains covered in snow and ice. Evolution responded by creating animals built to survive these brutal conditions. The woolly rhinoceros was a massive, shaggy beast with a distinctive forward-leaning horn up to three feet long. This wasn't just for show. It worked like a snow shovel, letting the rhino plow through deep drifts to reach buried grass underneath. Everything about this animal was built for extreme cold. Thick, rust-coloured fur covered its body. A heavy layer of fat provided insulation, and a pronounced shoulder hump stored extra energy. Evolution had taken a tropical rhino and completely redesigned it for frozen deserts where normal rhinos would quickly freeze to death. But perhaps the strangest adaptation belongs to the Saiga antelope. The Saiga's most noticeable feature is its oversized, trunk-like nose that hangs down over its mouth. This bizarre nose works as both a heater and an air filter. Inside are winding passages lined with mucus and tiny hairs. In winter, they warm the freezing air before it reaches the lungs. In summer, they filter out the choking dust kicked up by stampeding herds. This unique nose lets Saigas run at full speed across the windiest, dustiest terrain without struggling to breathe an adaptation no other antelope has. Then there's the wild Bactrian camel, the ultimate cold desert survivor. These camels sport two humps of fat to convert into energy and water reserves to survive long droughts and sparse forage. Unlike their desert-dwelling Arabian cousins built for heat, Bactrians handle extreme cold. They grow thick, shaggy coats for minus 30 degrees Celsius nights, then shed down to lighter fur for plus 40 degrees Celsius summers. They can even drink salty water when fresh water isn't available, something most mammals can't do. Their wide, padded feet walk easily on both sand and snow, and their nostrils seal shut during sandstorms while double rows of eyelashes protect their eyes. But over in Australia, Evolution was running completely different experiments. Australia's interior became one of the harshest deserts on Earth, and evolution created animals that seem almost impossible. Meet Diprotodon, the largest marsupial that ever lived. This giant rivaled a rhino in size, roaming the dry interior of ancient Australia in herds. It didn't have a camel-like hump, but it was built for life in a harsh, seasonal landscape. Its massive body could retain heat, its broad snout helped process tough, drought-stressed plants, and its slow, energy-efficient lifestyle allowed it to survive long stretches when water and fresh vegetation were scarce. Evolution had turned a wombat's relative into a three-ton specialist of Australia's dry plains. Then there was Procoptodon, the giant short-faced kangaroo standing over six feet tall, this bizarre creature had a single large toe on each foot, basically a hoof. 
perfect for traveling across hard desert ground. Unlike normal kangaroos, its eyes faced forward, giving it depth perception to spot distant water sources across the barren landscape. With a shortened face and powerful jaws, it could bite through tough, drought-resistant plants and extract every drop of moisture from them. It was a kangaroo that evolved to fill the role of a desert antelope, something that existed nowhere else on Earth. But hunting these giants was Thylacoleo, the marsupial lion. Despite evolving from plant-eating ancestors, this predator developed massive stabbing front teeth and blade-like back teeth that worked like scissors. Thylacoleo had one of the most powerful bites of any mammal its size, with opposable thumbs tipped with huge claws, it likely ambushed giant kangaroos and young Deprotodon from caves and scrubland at dusk. A marsupial that completely redesigned itself to become the apex predator, doing the job that big cats do on other continents. These Australian desert specialists thrived for tens of thousands of years until humans arrived with fire and spears and everything changed. But the most terrifying predator in Australia's arid interior wasn't a mammal at all. Megalania was the largest land-dwelling lizard that ever lived. Up to 23 feet long and weighing around 1,300 pounds. Imagine a Komodo dragon, but triple the length and nearly 10 times the weight. This monster hunted through patience. It would ambush from the scrubland, deliver one devastating bite, then wait, its teeth slashed deep wounds. But the real weapon was venom that prevented blood clotting and caused shock. Even if prey escaped, Megalania would track the blood trail across the desert, waiting for the venom to finish its work. Evolution had created an apex predator perfectly suited to Australia's open landscape, where prey had nowhere to hide and blood trails were easy to follow. Megalania thrived for over 2 million years, until humans arrived with fire and spears around 50,000 years ago. But on the other side of the Pacific, South America had its own strange desert creatures. Around 15 million years ago, the rise of the Andes Mountains created a rain shadow that formed the Atacama Desert, one of the driest places on Earth. And evolution's response was nothing short of bizarre. Thalassuchnus, the swimming sloth. While their forest cousins clung to trees, these sloths took to the ocean shallows. They evolved dense, heavy bones that worked like a diver's weight belt, allowing them to sink down and feed on underwater seagrasses and algae. Their snouts gradually shifted upward with nostrils on top, like a seal, so they could breathe while most of their heads stayed submerged. Over 5 million years, these sloths became progressively more aquatic. Later species developed even thicker bones and downward curved jaws, perfectly shaped for grazing completely underwater. Why such a drastic change? The Atacama's bone-dry land offered almost nothing to eat, but the coastal waters were rich with algae. Evolution pushed a slow, tree-dwelling mammal down a path no one could have predicted. A sloth, swimming in the ocean, next to one of Earth's driest deserts. But inland, terror ruled the plains. Forus Rakos, the terror bird, stood over eight feet tall with a massive ax-like beak and powerful legs built for running. This flightless predator had a razor sharp hooked beak that could deliver devastating strikes to prey. Its reinforced skull absorbed the impact of these attacks and forward facing eyes helped it track moving animals with precision. Since South America was isolated from other continents at the time, these birds filled the role usually played by big cats and wolves. Evolution had turned birds into the apex predators of the plains, basically dinosaurs reborn. 270 million years ago and long before dinosaurs, all the continents had merged into one massive supercontinent called Pangaea. Its interior became the most brutal desert Earth has ever known, with scorching days, freezing nights, and almost no water. Life had to invent completely new ways to survive. Enter Dimetrodon, the famous sail-backed predator. That massive sail on its back, made of long spines covered in skin, worked like a solar panel. In the early morning, it could soak up sunlight and raise the animal's body temperature in just a few hours, letting it move and hunt while its cold-blooded prey was still sluggish. At midday, 
when temperatures soared, the sail worked in reverse, acting as a radiator to release excess heat. Dimetrodon was one of the first creatures to evolve this kind of temperature control system. As the desert grew even drier, a group called Therapsids, mammal-like reptiles, began to dominate. One of the most successful was Diictodon, a pig-sized plant eater that lived like a modern prairie dog. Fossils show these animals were expert burrowers, often found in pairs within spiral-shaped tunnels up to five feet deep. Down in these self-dug shelters, they escaped the deadly midday heat and created cool, humid spaces underground. With strong, clawed hands and a stocky body built for digging, Diictodon was perfectly designed for burrow life. Some fossil sites even contain male and female skeletons together, suggesting they formed lifelong pairs, behavior we associate with mammals, but happening tens of millions of years before true mammals existed. But the most terrifying predators were the Gorgonopsians, saber-toothed therapsids that ruled the late Permian deserts. These wolf to bear-sized carnivores were the first animals ever to develop true saber teeth. Their elongated canines worked like steak knives, inflicting deep wounds that bled prey quickly. Long, muscular necks powered those devastating bites, and powerful shoulders helped them wrestle victims to the ground. They hunted like big cats, but were still reptiles, evolution testing out the predator body plan millions of years before actual mammals appeared. For millions of years, these saber-toothed creatures reigned as the ultimate desert predators. But then, the end Permian mass extinction struck, wiping out 96% of all species, including every single Gorgonopsian. Yet somehow, some creatures survived. Thanks for watching guys, my name's Joe and this is Buried Earth. Subscribe so our videos pop up on your feed and check out a video on screen right now that we think you will really enjoy.